everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ron Levari and today I'd like to share with you my MIDI controller setup for the Octatrack. Now I'm using the Novation Launch Control XL, which works very well with the Octatrack. It has eight channels, just like the Octatrack. Each one has one fader, three knobs, and a bunch of buttons that I personally don't use. Now, of course, there are many uh, options for programming the launch control and you can play around with different presets, but I really wanted to have just one preset that is flexible enough for me to accomplish anything I wanted with the Octatrack. And the way I use it is mainly as a sound design machine. I use it sort of as, as a multi-effect unit. I record into it as well, of course, but I don't really play samples out of it. That's the way I do it. It really doesn't matter. You can use it as a sequencer, as a sampler. All I'm showing is a convenient way of controlling this machine and doing all of the sound design work inside the Octatrack. Now, of course, you can open the manual and you can look up all the MIDI, all the MIDI numbers for the control changes and the MIDI notes and just assign each one with its own number. But I think there's a nicer way to keep this open. So whatever inspiration you have for different sound design options, you don't have to go open the menu and, and change the preset. You can do the work inside the Octatrack. Now, the way I do it is by using the LFO page. And if you notice here, I have the top knob on channel one. Yeah, channel one. Controlling the first LFO depth each LFO has speed and depth. So I'm using the depth control for the first one. Second knob, second and third, the third. The faders are for the volume. I actually have it, so these are um, paired. So I have channels one and two usually in pair, three and four, so three actually controls four. It, it really doesn't matter. Again, that's only my way of using it because I use it for sound design. I like to make use of all the, the slots I have for effects. So for me, two effects are not usually not enough. I like to group tracks and have the benefit of four effects at least. In this example, I have the first four tracks combined. So the first track is a through machine and I have my signal. My signal. <laughs> First rule of sound engineering, huh? Turn, on, turn the volume on. I have my signal running through the first track and tracks number two, three, and four are all neighbors, which means that the signal comes through and comes out to channel four. So these two knobs actually control channel four. That's the way I use it. It doesn't matter for this explanation. So I have volume and Q, which I use as a send uh, to ex external effects machines. Now, back to the LFO. So I have first, first LFO depth, second, and third. Now, when you use the LFOs that are supplied with this machine, usually they're used to create some cool effects. Like, for instance, this is just a regular sound. If I go to this channel over here, I have this cool ring modulator that's running on here. I'll show you. It's a square wave. And of course, I can change the speed and the depth. That's always an option. It's, it's great, but I want something basic I can work with just to have these as flexible MIDI controllers to take me from 0 to 127. Right? MIDI controller numbers. So, I go back to my first batch of channels. I have my sound and I go to the LFO page. Now, on channel 1 I have an EQ. I usually like to have an EQ to start my chain. And if you'll notice, the wave is just a block. 
and I designed it myself. And you have this option, it's very cool. In each LFO menu, you have, of course, the first, second, and third LFO, and then you have a page for designing your own wave. So you do this by hitting one or more of the buttons on the sequencer and using the level knob just to take certain things up and down. This is not a video about designing very designing intricate waves. Look it up if you feel like it. I use it in a very simplistic way. I just hit as many buttons as I can, just take everything up. And now it's just a block. And as you can see, I already have, I usually use channel eight the designed wave on channel eight, I usually take it up all the way. So when I go to channel one, where I have my EQ, yeah. Very handy to have on your first track or the last. I already have on LFO one, two, and three, I have the designed wave from channel 8, right? T8, track 8. Because here on track 8, I go to design, it's already all the way up. It's in at 127. Okay? Back to channel 1. So, I assigned my first LFO to control the EQ high gain. Of course, I can I can play with it, I can assign whatever I want, but in this case, high gain here, just like a regular EQ. Mid and low. Back on the effect itself, I take all of the values to zero. Actually, mi minus 64, it's the same as zero. So, I can boost, but I can also cut. In this case, the speed of the LFO doesn't matter, right? I can take the speed up or down. It doesn't. It will not change anything because the depth is constant. It's a single line, okay? So the speed doesn't matter. By taking all the values down, again, I can go minus. I can cut. If everything was at zero, Let's go to the EQ and I'll set everything pretty much to zero. I can boost, but I can't cut. So let's turn everything down. And now we start from scratch and build our sound. Okay. Let's go to the next example. Um, channel two, for instance. This is a very simple setup that I made just for the for this video. I usually have much more happening here, also automated uh, with different tricks, but let's keep it simple. Channel two has a filter. This is also a good place to start with, first of all, setting up your filter. So on the LFO page, you can see that I have the first LFO controlling the, the Q function, which is the resonance, the second, the width, and the third, the bass, the high pass, low pass. And I have my filter. It's not modulating, it's just going from zero to 127. Here again, when I go to the effect itself, I need to set it up. The Q, I want it to start, the resonance, I, I want it to start at zero. If I already have it cranked up, I, I can't start from nothing. I'll, I'll always, it will always be active. I want it to be sometimes more subtle. So I just have it at zero. The width, I take all the way down. So when the knob is all the way up, great. When I want to cut the high frequencies, then it 
will go all the way down so just remember it has to go together you have to match the LFO design to the effect page okay another thing to add in some cases I refrain from using the the full wave that I have on channel 8 which is the 127 value all across for this I've designed a few more waves so the wave on channel 7 for instance goes only up to 100 6 channel 6 goes all the way to 90 and 5 goes all the way to 80 I did that because in some cases some parameters here can be very aggressive so the resonance for instance if you take it all the way up and you crank the filter it can shriek and can be very nasty it, it can be cool but I try to be careful with that so on the LFO page for channel 2 which is the filter channel on the Q function I have actually wave 6 and not wave 8 so even if I crank the resonance all the way up it's still tasteful it's 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 extreme in extreme volumes you, you'll be able to hear it yeah but it won't cause damage to any speaker or anyone's ears okay so uh, let's continue now on channel 3 we have a delay okay so again first LFO page I have the first and this is just the way I like to to have it you can do whatever this is the way I that makes sense to me that if my hand drops on this controller one two three I don't even have to look I know what this does I know what this does I know what this does okay so the top one I have the feedback second one the time and third is the scent so on the effect itself the send is all the way down so I can also play without hearing delay I can just shut it off okay the feedback all the way down again so I have the entire range from very short to infinite The time as well starts from number one, the, the lowest the lowest value. Again, why not why limit yourself when you can enjoy the effects you get from the lowest the lowest value? It's pretty cool. Okay, that was the delay. Number four, the final track in this little patch, has a reverb. So, another example, I go to the LFO page, and the first one is the time, is how long the reverb will continue to, to, to sound. The second one is uh, the low pass filter, make it a bit darker. And the third is the mix. And now we go to the effect page I have the mix turned down all the way again I don't always want to hear the reverb only when I only when I send the the signal to re reverb I actually want to hear it For if it's if it's shut all the way dry dry signal I like to actually have it on send rather than mix, but they're both cool. Okay. The low pass is again at zero. I want the entire range for me. That's what I like. And the time also very short. And then I can play with it. Combine all these together and it's a very quick and easy way to just
And again, this is a very simple patch, but that's the idea. So once again, first LFO depth, second LFO depth, third LFO depth, volume, send, whatever you like. Go to the effects, I'm sorry, to the LFO page. Choose a channel, it doesn't matter. Channel 8 is my preferred one. Design your own full volume wave. And then you can assign it to whatever parameter you choose. And you have yourself a MIDI controller, very flexible one to work with anything you like on the Octatrack. Now, there are many things, there are many other things you can do with this preset, but let's finish now because I don't want to put too much information in one video. Uh, but of course, if you do have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. And if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing and I will see you next time.